Hey there folks, Mr. D here. In this video, we are going to be doing some synthetic division. Now, if you saw the last video for long division of polynomials, consider this a godsend. So this is gonna be the life hack to end all life hacks for division. Synthetic division is kind of a shortcut way of doing polynomial division as long as we are dividing out a linear factor. So if you need to pause the video at this point to write this down, by all means, go for it. We're, we can use synthetic division as long as, and I'm gonna highlight it here, our divisor is a linear factor. So that means we have to be dividing out an x plus or an x minus some number. So basically our divisor just can't have any exponents. You can't divide out like an x squared or x to the third or anything. Plain old x, okay? So this is going to be a very, very speedy way of doing this, of doing division. Now, whenever we are dividing out one single x, whatever the exponent of our dividend was, if you divide out one x, your quotient, your answer would be one less than. Right, so if I had x to the fourth to start off my polynomial, but I divided out an x, my answer would start off with an x to the third. If you start off with x to the seventh, you divide out an x, your quotient, your answer would have x to the sixth. So let's see an example. Here we've got x squared plus 3x plus 5, or we're dividing out x plus 1. We could do this with long division. It might suck a whole lot. Synthetic division focuses on the coefficients of your dividend and then it focuses on the opposite number or the opposite value of the number that you see inside the factor. So instead of a one, we're gonna think of that as a negative one. So here's what we're gonna to do to set things up. We're gonna put the opposite number as what's in our linear factor in a little starting box out here. And then the numbers that we line up over here for synthetic division are just the coefficients from above. Now, when we do synthetic division, again, it's just gonna be a very iterative process and you're gonna go down, then diagonal, then down, then diagonal, then down, then diagonal, over and over and over. Anytime we go down, we are going to add. So anytime you go straight down, we're going to add. Let's see if I can get that in there. And anytime you go diagonal, you are going to multiply. And in this case, you're always gonna multiply by your divisor. So for this one, we're gonna do negative one. Essentially, you're just multiplying by whatever number is in that little box off to the side. I can't move that now. Here we go. All right, so to start this off, we're gonna drop our first coefficient straight down. That's just a one. And then I'm gonna go diagonally up here. When I go diagonally, I multiply by this number, in this case, negative one. One times negative one is negative one. Now I add straight down, three and negative one gives me a two. Then I go diagonally. When I go diagonally, I multiply by negative one in this case. So that'd be a negative two. Then I add straight down and I get three. The last number is my remainder. These two values are gonna be coefficients. Coefficients of what? Well, my answer. So I know the remainder is going to be a three. Our divisor is an x plus one which means my next term would be the constant as I go left to right or right to left, which means the term before that must be the linear. So this would be my answer here. So the one, the two, and the three. Another way to think of this, if you need to know what exponent to start off on for your answer, it's always gonna be one less than your dividend. So if I start off with the squared here, this would start off with a plain old x to the first. All right, let's see the next one. We've got x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 2x plus three. Again, these coefficients manifest as the numbers 
for our synthetic division. You'll notice though we have the zero and that comes from the fact that there was no x to the third term. So if there's ever any skipped terms, you need to use a placeholder of zero. And since we're doing x minus three as our divisor, we will use a positive three over here. Now what this means is every time we go on that diagonal movement, so again, we're going down, diagonal, down, diagonal, down, diagonal. Whenever we go diagonally, we're gonna be multiplying by three in this case. So you always multiply by whatever number is in the starting box. So to kickstart it, take your first number, drop it straight down, so one. Then I'll go diagonally, I'm multiplying by this number, so I'm multiplying one times three, that is just three. Add straight down, zero plus three is three. Diagonally across, I multiply by three, and I get nine. Add straight down, negative 10 and nine, I get negative one. Multiply to go diagonally. Negative one times three is negative three. Add straight down, I get negative one again. Multiply diagonally. I get negative three again, add straight down, I get a remainder of zero. So now since my dividend started with x to the fourth, my answer will start off with an x to the third. So my answer would be one x to the third plus three x squared minus one x minus one, and there's no remainder, so I don't need to worry about the remainder term. A Little bit faster than long division, yeah? Next one, we've got our polynomial. A few skip terms, so we have to use zeros as placeholders. We take the opposite of the number inside our linear factor, and that's gonna be over here in the starting box. And we're gonna go down, diagonal, down, diagonal, down, diagonal, down. Whenever we go diagonally, we're multiplying by a negative two. So let's get going. We'll start this off by dropping down the three. Multiply by negative two, that's negative six. Add straight down. Multiply by negative two, I get positive 12. Add straight down. Multiply by negative two, I get negative eight. Add straight down. Multiply by negative two, I get positive 12. Add straight down. Multiply by negative two, I get negative 22. Add straight down, I get negative 21. That last number is always gonna be the remainder. These numbers now are the coefficients for my quotient. My dividend started with x to the fifth, so this will start off with an x to the fourth. So three x to the fourth minus six x to the third plus four x squared minus six x plus 11 minus 21 over my divisor, which was x plus two. Just imagine how long that problem would have taken us doing long division. Holy smokes. All right, one more and then we'll jump over to the next bit. So we're dividing out synthetic, using synthetic division again. Uh, this one, we've got a missing term at the very end. So if you ever have a missing term, even if it's at the end, you gotta use a zero as the placeholder. If you don't have that there, your terms will get all offset. And since we have an x plus two, a negative two is what goes over here. Whenever we multiply going diagonally, we will always multiply by negative two. So let's drop the one straight down, and then I'll multiply by negative two, add straight down, multiply by negative two, add straight down, multiply by negative two, add straight down, multiply by negative two, add straight down. Since my dividend started with x to the fourth, my quotient will start off with x to the third, so one x to the third, no, you don't need to write that one, minus three x squared plus seven x minus 20 plus 40 as the remainder, so 40 over x plus two. Woof. All right, so now let's get into the remainder theorem. Now, previously, if we wanted to do function evaluations for polynomials, in this example, we're gonna be using negative two. If we wanted to find a function value, we would plug in negative two for every occurrence of x. So anytime you see an x, you pop a negative two in its place. If you're doing this in a calculator, no big deal, right? One line of work, hit enter, boom, you get the answer. However, what if you don't have a calculator? Or what if it's a non-calc part of a test or quiz? 
you'd be forced to go through and do that by hand. Now, it's not difficult per se, but, you know, there's a lot of negatives to keep track of. And mental math can kind of get a little hairy when it's, you know, negative 24 plus 32 minus 17. So you're, you're liable to making some whoopsies. Well, there's something called the remainder theorem that actually lets you use synthetic division. And when you use synthetic division, whatever remainder you get will actually be the function value for that input. So this is kind of what I was alluding to. We really like seeing zeros over here because if I have a function value of zero, I've got an x-intercept. And if I've got an x-intercept, I know a factor. So just to prove this, we know the answer should be negative 9. We're going to do synthetic division, and you better believe this should be negative 9 over here. So we'll drop the 3 straight down. When we multiply diagonally, we're multiplying by negative 2. Add straight down. Multiply by negative 2. Add straight down. Multiply by negative 2. Holy smokes, wouldn't you know it? We got negative 9. All right. So let's use this now. We have a polynomial function, 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 10x minus 9. We want to evaluate these function values at negative 2 and at 3. If you, for some reason, hate synthetic division, yeah, you could just throw in negative 2 for x and see what happens. You could plug in 3 for x and see what happens. Or you could set up your synthetic division, and you can crank these out relatively quickly using basic multiplication and basic math principles, right? So we're just adding straight down and multiplying by negative two for this first one every single time. So for the first one, I'm getting f of two, or sorry, f of negative two equals 11. Second one, same process, only now I'm multiplying by three whenever I do that diagonal move. And in doing so, I can keep the mental math kind of quick and easy to get my solution. Tell you what, though, that is a heck of a lot easier for me, at least, than trying to figure out, all right, 3 to the third power is 27. 2 times 27, what is that? And then 4 times, let's see, that would be 9. So 2 times 27 plus 4 times 9 minus 10 times 3 minus 9. You know what? This is just easier. Let's do two more. If you want to try to pause the video and, and get to the answer before I do, that's not a bad move. Also kind of note that we have a missing constant term at the end, so we had to fill in zeros. So again, if you want to pause the video and see if you can get to the answer before I do, have at it. I guess if it's paused, you'll by default get there. Whatever. All right, so we go down, diagonal, down, diagonal. Whenever I move diagonal for this first one, I'm multiplying by 5. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, what is that, negative 9? So negative 45 is what I'm getting for the first one. i got to zoom in a bit. Can't write that small. All right, next one. Whenever I go diagonally, I'm multiplying by negative 1. So we'll start off, drop that first number down, multiply by negative 1 each time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm getting 65 for the other one. All right. So here we have an example. Someone's trying to use synthetic division to divide x to the third minus x squared minus 2x, dividing out x plus 1. Find all of the errors. Ooh, it's even bolded. That leads me to believe there might be more than one. Then correct them and divide the polynomials. Classic Billy. What's this guy doing? Making all the whoopsies. All right, well, let's see. First, I'm noticing, all right, so this is an x plus 1, which means this should be a negative 1 right there. Come on, Billy. So that should be a negative 1. Uh, then I'm also noticing, hey, there's no constant term at the end of this. There should be a constant term, but there's not, which means I need to see a 0 over here, but I don't. So those are some errors I'm noticing. Well, let's see what happens if I tried making those amendments. 
So we'll do our down diagonal process over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <coughs> so I'm noticing that when I do this, I'm definitely getting a different answer than what Billy got. Uh, since my dividend started with x to the third, this will start off with an x squared. So I'm getting x squared minus 2x, and that would be it. Neat. If I really wanted to, I could always double check. I could distribute x squared minus 2x into an x plus 1, and it should work out to be x to the third minus x squared minus 2x if I wanted to double check my work. All right, that is it for this video, folks. Hopefully this makes a sliver of sense. You know the drill. If at any point you have questions, please let me know. And as always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.